Hey guys, welcome back to the Vice Casting Couch. Today we'll be showing how I fixed a trip light KVM console that I bought off eBay. Now I've been looking to get a KVM console for quite some time, um, specifically one that has the KVM built into it, and that's what I found so appealing about this trip light. It has 16 ports on the back, has the KVM built into it, and it has the console. So when I was scrolling through eBay one day, I found this trip light KVM for only $100, and with shipping it was about $120. And it was marked as used, which means it's fully operational and functional, it just might have some cosmetic wear. And in the item description, the seller did say it was power tested only. But what does that mean? He didn't say the results of the power test, there's no pictures verifying that it worked. So I decided to buy it, um, thinking that it was working, and I plugged it in. And at first, I didn't notice the power LED turn on at all. Well, I said, well, maybe let me open it up. Let's see if there's a power button or power switch in there. And still nothing. There's no power switch. And there's nothing turning on. So I decided to open it up and take a look at the power supply. Now, I verified that the mains voltage was getting to the power supply. And as we can see, it got 120 volts. I did also test the fuse here for continuity. And the fuse turned out to be good. So I was like, okay, let's put the fuse back in and see if there's anything outputted at all from this power supply. So once it was turned in, I flipped over the board and I decided to test the pins on the output connector and I got nothing. So the power supply is dead. Now I don't have the expertise to actually troubleshoot this and fix the board itself. So I decided to find a replacement. When I was looking for a replacement for this power supply, I couldn't find one, but I did find a data sheet for it, which told us a lot about the power supply and allowed me to find an alternative. So we see here that it outputs five volts at a maximum of four amps and 12 volts at a maximum of 3.75 amps. And on the second page, it actually has the pinouts listed. So on the output connector, it has which pin is 12 volts and which one's five volts. And this is useful because on the PCB itself, it did not have those markings. So with this information, I sought out to find an alternative power supply, and I found this cheap one on Amazon for 15 bucks. It outputs both 12 volts and 5 volts, but the 5 volts is only up to 1 amp. I figured let's give this a shot. I could get 2 day shipping with Amazon Prime, and so when it arrived, I quickly plugged it up, hooked up my power cable, and turned it on. And the power supply has an LED on itself that shows it's working. And on the front of the KVM, I do see that its power LED is turning on. So now I open up the screen. And to my surprise, we are presented with a login prompt. Now this is good, but I don't know the login information. So I figure I'd try a couple defaults like admin, password, etc. Um, none of that worked. And so I started reading through the manual of this device and I did find that on the main board there is a reset default password jumper. And I'll show you how to do that. Right here you can see the little jumper. It says reset default password. And I don't have the nice jumper connector so I just used a screwdriver in this case. So I kind of wedged it in there and you power the board on and you'll be presented with this message saying your password information has been cleared remove the jumper and power it back on. So I remove the screwdriver and I power it back on and I was presented with a login prompt. But don't worry, this is all cleared out now. If you just press enter, you'll be into the KVM. Another thing I wanted to verify is that with this power supply only having one amp on the five volt rail, I want to make sure we weren't getting to the high, top end of that, maxing it out and verify that it had enough amperage to actually power this board. So I connected up my multimeter and I verified the amperage and right now I'm only pulling about 0.4 amps but I did notice every time you plug in another cable it goes up by 0.01 amps more. And this is consistent with a new cable and also turning on certain LEDs on the front like your caps lock and your num lock. And doing some quick dirty math I even figured that with all 16 cables plugged in and all the LEDs on the front turned on, you'd only be a little over half an amp, which leaves us plenty of headroom with this power supply. 
house. Once I verified everything's working and I'm not going to burn down my house, I figured let's clean up this installation. Here I'm putting what are called ferrules on the Brady cable. These are really nice little connectors that will bond all the braids together and prevent any strays from potentially shorting out your circuit. I learned about these when I was watching some car stereo guys on YouTube and I figured I'd give them a shot. And they're really nice and I'd really recommend them. So here I'm just finishing all the cables on the output connector that connects the power supply to the KVM's main board. Um, after that, I wasn't too happy with how the main cables that came with this were kind of short. It was running over one of the PCBs with mains voltage, and I, I didn't like that, so I bought some longer cables, um, and I hooked them up with new spade connectors, and I routed it. That way, it's not going over the PCB at all. So here I'm just trimming it to length, stripping the cables. And here you can see I already put a screw terminal on the power supply, but it, it comes with this spring-loaded one, and that did not have enough grip to hold the ferrules. So I'll show you kind of how I removed the spring-loaded clamp and put the screw terminals on. I found the easiest way was to break the plastic housing and then snip at the bottom of it to remove the metal, and then we could actually unsolder the rest of it. I found this to be the easiest way because once you clip the terminal there still is a small lead in there but then you can just kind of drag your soldering iron across the pad and it will pull the pin out. So here I am just putting a little bit more solder to make it easier to suck up the solder with my solder sucker and now we put the new screw terminal on. I do wish there was a manufacturer that had the screw terminal by default and also that the screw terminal was more an inline approach and not one that came out of the side because it does make it a little difficult to install. But once we're done, I hook up the main lines, I screw it down for a nice tight connection. Now I start to think of a way to place it in here. Now, unfortunately, the screw holes on this power supply don't line up with the ones on the board, and I don't have the expertise to remove those and put in my own um, standoffs. So I just kind of did something a little, a little janky, but kind of MacGyver. I took some plastic to insulate the bottom, make sure it doesn't short out on the case, and I'm just using some 3M tape to secure it in here. Um, this piece of plastic I have came from some other uh, packaging, and I just put it in place. This 3M tape holds it nicely, and it works well. So once I've tidied up the install, I decided to actually poke around the menu a little bit and see what we have going on. Uh, we have our typical stuff like setting our username and password. We can set a logout timeout here. That way, after X amount of minutes, it'll automatically log out the user and you'll be prompted to log back in if you want to use the KVM. So I just set it for five minutes. Um, you can also edit stuff like ports names. You can reset default values, clear the name list, turn the beeper on and off, a bunch of stuff. There is a way to do a firmware upgrade, but you do require some weird RJ11 cable that plugs into the bottom of the screen here. But I don't have that cable, and I'm not too worried about the firmware on my KVM at the moment. I'm not sure what the set console mode does, but the manual has a lot of good information, so I'd recommend looking into that if you're curious. Now, a comment I get on a lot of my home lab type videos is, what is the power consumption on this thing? This thing, when it's idling with the screen closed, pulls a little less than 10 watts, and when the screen is open, and you're actually doing stuff with your piece of equipment, you're pulling about 21 and a half, a little less than 22 watts. Now this is with the replacement power supply because the stock one didn't work. So if you do get one that is working out of the box, your power consumption may differ slightly, but it should be pretty similar to what you're seeing here. Overall, I really like this trip light KVM. It's nice having a 1U KVM rack console with the KVM built in. I've seen a lot of these consoles like the HPs where it's just the screen and the keyboard and you require a separate device. I kind of like this all in one nature and it, it works well. I also want this to be a cautionary note to anyone buying off of eBay. Make sure to you know, read the description, look at the pictures, and if you have any questions, I guarantee you a quick message to the seller probably could have cleared up my issue here. But I also wanted to show that if it is just a broken power supply, there is a way to fix it and get around it and get a nice piece of equipment for a relatively affordable price. Thank you guys for watching the video. 
I hope you guys like it. Make sure to give us a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And stay tuned for our future videos. 